Welcome to the Christmas edition of Black Night News. I'm Maddie Bradley. And I'm Lisa White. Last week's snow days have created quite a disaster with finals rapidly approaching. Uh, when we return from winter break, the students will come back on the 7th and then we uh, will start our EOCs on the 14th and 15th. We'll have finals on the 16th and 17th. Second semester then will start on the 21st, the day after Martin Luther King Day. The plan at this point is to add those days to the end of the school year. However, uh, the administration at central office is having discussions regarding other days that we potentially could move around. At this point, uh, we know that spring break will not be moved, that, that we're still going to have spring break, that we're looking for ways to, to get all of our days in before the end of May. A Farmington resident, Jay Sheets, has been quite successful on the popular television show, The Biggest Loser. Sheets has done exceptionally well on his weight loss journey. The live finale for the show will be in February. Farmington residents are quite excited for the recent announcements that Schnooks will be coming to the area. The Schnooks Market Incorporated will be spending close to $14 million to renovate the former Value City building where the Schnooks will be located. The store is expected to open by December of 2014. With last Tuesday's board meeting, the Farmington School Board officially voted in favor of having a bond issue on this April's ballot. Black Knight News reporter Madison Brown is at the Farmington R7 board building to get more details about the bond issue. I was able to speak with Don Eaton and Matt Rubel about their big upcoming plans for the bond issue that will be taking place in April 2014. Uh, well, you have to understand in school finance, um, there's really two flows of money through a school district and one is the operating money and the other is the debt service money. Uh, the operating money is, is are the funds that we use to, to run the school district. It's all of our programs, it's all of our personnel, all the student activities, athletics, and instructional uh, costs. Uh, the debt service money is totally separate, and basically that's money that comes in through tax revenue that can only be used to pay existing debt. So when you have a list, a rather extensive list, uh, for major capital projects and major capital needs, such as we've identified here in the district, um, the, really the best way to finance that is through a bond issue. Uh, school districts aren't allowed legally just to go get a loan and in, in our case we're looking at uh, approximately 27 million dollars worth of needs and projects that we're going to be proposing. So um, you know for a school district in Missouri legally the best way to do that is through a bond issue. Uh, of course we need voter approval to do that but basically the bond issue would allow us then to issue bonds and basically receive those funds uh, to finance those projects which we are proposing and then uh, the good part of that is you pay that you pay those bonds or you pay those uh, uh, debt payments off with debt service funds so it totally does not affect your operating monies and therefore doesn't affect things like student programs uh, instructional needs and those kind of things. It's basically a separate pool of money. All right, when we're, we're looking to address the facility needs of the district, one of the first things we did was uh, work on a facility needs assessment, which was basically a comprehensive needs assessment identifying the areas that are most severe, that have the highest uh, need in our, throughout our district. And through that facility needs assessment and, and speaking to staff and working with staff, and we've currently sent out a staff survey related to our assessment to our needs assessment and, and related areas. Through that, basically, we came up with four main categories. Uh, technology being one, uh, a second being added instructional space, a third being taking care of renovating uh, the existing space like roofs and HVAC items, and then we're also looking at safety and security. So those are the four main areas of the bond issue. Uh, when you talk about technology, and I'll go through them you know, a little bit in a little bit more detail, when we're talking about technology, we're not only talking about increasing the instructional technology within the classrooms, uh, we are also talking about cre uh, creating a, a culture of, of using technology throughout the school district, all the way from pre-K, uh, early childhood center, all the way up through high school. We are looking at a one-to-one -one initiative uh, in Lincoln all the way up so that would be 5 through 12 with a Chromebook or a similar device and we are looking at uh, 10 to 12 laptops and 6 to 8 um, iPads or a similar device in each one of the elementary classrooms depending on class size and why why are we looking at that because that's the future that's where the students need to be technology increases their in student engagement it also cre in increases their creativity and their ownership in producing materials for class and all the research shows that implemented the correct way focusing on PD and focusing on using that technology students thrive in a technology enriched setting um, 
when we look at safety and security, obviously we're looking at front entries, we're looking at doors, uh, we're looking at cameras, we're looking at all those items uh, to make sure that our students, uh, number one, are, are safe in our school buildings. Um, and again, you know, I, I can't go into a ton of detail since I'm limited on time, but really, again, looking at doors, looking at uh, playgrounds also to meet ADA uh, compliance for 2014, looking at secured front entries where you have a, a buzzer system or a buzz-in system where every front entry is secure so we can actually uh, make sure that no one is able to get into our building without seeing someone prior to entering. And again, you know, one of the, one of the main things, obviously, is, is the safety and security of our kids throughout our throughout our school district. Um, another item related to the bond issue, whether it's the third or fourth category, would be uh, increased instructional space. We've seen about a 10% uh, increase in student population uh, throughout the Farmington District over the, about the last 11, 12 years, and we haven't really added uh, much instructional space. And one of the things we're looking at is very large elementary classes, very large kindergarten classes, uh, where six, seven, eight years ago, a large kindergarten class was 275 or 280. Now we're seeing a typical kindergarten class being 290, 300. We've even had kindergarten classes over the last three or four years that were 315, 320. So we're basically, we're out of space at some of those pieces. Uh, parts of the new instructional space will go into a new early childhood center on that Truman campus attached to the back of Truman Auditorium. What that will allow for is flexible space between the kindergarten building and that early childhood center. It'll also allow us to expand our programming to that early childhood and, and offer more opportunities for those youngest students, which, which we know is a, is a great benefit for them. We're also looking at added instructional space in classrooms at Roosevelt. Again, with those increased numbers, we need, we need increased instructional space. So we're talking about looking at about four to five classrooms there, uh, again, to, to take on that increased enrollment. We're also looking at two additional classrooms at the middle school. And we're also looking at um, rehabbing and reconditioning science labs at both Lincoln Middle School and High School. Uh, we're looking at a band choir facility at the high school, and we're also talking about and looking at the possibilities uh, of a new gym at the high school. Um, so that, that kind of wraps up the instructional space and some of those pieces. Uh, finally, one of, the, one of the biggest ticket items in the bond issue is looking at our, making sure that our district facilities are taken care of and not just doing that short term, but doing that long term. Uh, looking at roofs, looking at HVAC, HVAC, heating and cooling, um, looking at, at some of those pieces. And just those two pieces alone, you know, are in that nine to ten million dollar range for the bond issue. And again, we're wanting to do things not just for the next two to three years, but we're looking long term. When we replace a roof, we're looking at a 25 year, 30 year replacement on that roof, a guaranteed roof. When we're looking at HVAC, we're not looking just to just put a band aid on the current. Um, structures and the, and the current systems that are in place, we're looking at going with a high efficiency system like an HVAC, a VRV system uh, that allows for energy efficiency as well as sets a new standard throughout the district. So those are, those are some of the things we're looking at. As I mentioned before, we're also looking at parking lots, we're looking at playgrounds to meet ADA uh, compliance, we're looking at items like gym floors. Uh, our gym floors are tile right now, not the safest surface obviously for elementary kids and we spend in the neighborhood of fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a year getting those surfaces ready for the beginning of the school year. So many different items and again we'll go into more detail at a later date and have a longer discussion related to some more of the specifics but that's kind of an overview of what we're looking at for uh, the April, April 8th 2014 bond issue. The annual Shop with the Cop was held on Thursday. News reporter Aaron Harkis has more information on this event. I had the chance to speak with Rodney Harris, the director of Shop with a Cop here at Farmington Walmart, and he explained to us how it works. This is Shop with a Cop's 21st year. Actually, we started out 21 years ago. Officer George Cobb started the program in St. Francis County, and we started out at the old grandpa store, which is closed now, and we started out with 76 kids. And this year, Shop with a Cop has set a new record. We have 518 kids on the list and we expect about 450 here this morning. Everything's running very smoothly. We've had a lot of officer participation from the police academy, the local prisons, FCC, Bonterre. You know, they've all turned out to help us do the kids and it's, it's really going well. He also let us know what it takes to be involved with Shop with a Cop. Well, Shop with a Cop program, like I said, was started by George Cobb and it's a program 
to build better relationships between police officers and children. Uh, too many times these kids, the only time they see a police officer is when something's gone awry. And we want them to know that the officers are human beings and it gives them a chance to bond with them and understand that these guys are not just a gun and a badge come to haul mom or dad off to jail. So we want the children to know that police officers are someone that they can turn to for help, you know, for a child to run to instead of away from, let's put it like that. It was amazing to see all the kids' Christmas wishes come true. Reporting from Black Knight News, Aaron Hargis. After this break, we will discuss more on national news and the upcoming holiday. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz Zinkerpel. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Michael Adams? Here. Michael Adams? Here. <laughs> Michael Adams? Yeah! Michael Adams. Students who miss 18 days of school in any grade risk falling behind and not graduating. Absences add up. Keep track at boostattendance.org today. On Tuesday, NBC's The Voice announced their Season 5 winner. Tess Ann Chin, coached by Adam Levine, won the title. This win gave Levine his second championship. Chen was the only remaining finalist to get all four of the judges to turn their chairs during the blind audition. For the holidays, viewers can see many different Christmas movies. These movies include the famous Twas the Night Before Christmas and Dr. Seuss's The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. On Christmas Day, TBS will be running an all-day marathon for A Christmas Story. Along with festive movies, a large number of new movies are soon to hit theaters. Over Christmas break, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty the Wolf of Wall Street, and The Lone Survivor will open. Recently, The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, and Frozen all made their debut in theaters. The video game market has continued its upward trend as sales for the PS4 and the Xbox One have climbed to over 2 million each in sales, with Call of Duty Ghost adding to this success as it tops the list for being the highest grossing game since the console's release nearly a month ago. On Tuesday night, two winning Mega Million tickets were sold. One ticket was sold in Atlanta, Georgia, with the other being sold in San Jose, California. The lump sum going to both winners will be $157.1 million. The locations the winning tickets were sold at will also receive around $1 million. That's all for this edition of Black Knight News. I'm Lisa White. And I'm Maddie Bradley. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas from the staff here at Black Knight News.